Hello friends, this is Adam with Movie Guy 365 and today I'm going to review the Blu-ray release of the Nicolas Cage movie Between Worlds. If you're new to the channel, please hit that like button, subscribe, hit that bell notification. I put out videos daily. You can also find me over at Twitter and Instagram at MovieGuy365. Between Worlds, the latest direct-to-Blu-ray film from, uh, or starring Nicolas Cage. Uh, this was directed by Maria Polera. Uh, as you know, I do enjoy the Nicolas Cage films that are not theatrical. They are, they, you know, do get dumped on a Blu-ray. And uh, while I really enjoyed his film, like, you know, Mom and Dad, I thought that was really, really good. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of Mandy, and I know a lot of people did like that one, but it just wasn't my kind of thing. So I was wondering where this was going to fall in. I was, I was thinking, just based off the cover, uh, it's going to fall more towards the Mandy than the mom and dad. Uh, but, you know, let me just start at the beginning. So basically, um, you know, no, I'm, I'm really going to try to stay away from spoilers in case you do want to check it out. Uh, so he plays a truck driver who's kind of, you know, down on his luck who, uh, I don't know they didn't really specify, but more or less recently lost his wife and daughter in a, in a uh, well, they don't say exactly, but apparently a fire. Uh, so, you know, so he stumbles upon this woman who's, you know, being choked in a, in a bathroom, you know, saves her, but then he comes to find out that she apparently has, like, when she experiences, like, a near-death kind of thing, she can communicate with the dead. And in this case, she's trying to communicate with her daughter, who was you know, in, an, in a coma from, I guess, a motorcycle accident. So that's where it starts. That's our basic premise. Uh, let me just say, um, <laughs> the first 15 minutes of this movie is pretty rough. Uh, the setup is not good at all. In fact, I was about, you know, over halfway through the movie when things started to kind of click a little bit about, like, you know, why things were happening the way they were. But... You know, it's, it's one of those kind of movies. It's very cheesy. But I, I did like the premise. You know, when I when I started and finished, I liked the overall premise of the film. Uh, I liked the actors and the actresses. I thought they were actually very, very good. Uh, you know, Frankie uh, Palint, Pup, uh, I'm sorry, Pretenthi plays his quote-unquote love interest. And uh, uh, Penelope Mitchell plays uh, her daughter. It, it was, it's an interesting, they, they all had a good chemistry. In fact, I really, that's probably one of the things I did enjoy the most about the film was I really did enjoy their chemistry. They had a really good rapport with one another. They played off each other very good. There weren't, I didn't feel like there was any bad characters in the film. That being said, I think the, the overall direction just needed a little bit more to it. I feel like, I understand that uh, uh, Maria Polero is a, relatively new filmmaker and I guess this is the kind of film to cut your teeth under but I feel like the story was good enough that it maybe got away from her a little bit uh, I would say exactly the first 15 minutes as I said were a bit rough in fact Nicolas Cage was was kind of while he was playing his playing a character in all his films they all kind of are Nicolas Cage in a way and this one was no different but I feel like the first few minutes, I was like, oh, this could be rough. Like, it, his character was just, you know, I don't know, maybe he was drunk, but they didn't really illustrate that very well. And then he kind of normals out through the middle portion of the movie, and then maybe the last 15 minutes get a little goofy again. Uh, but it, it makes more sense story-wise for him. And also, as I feel, I feel the, middle, the middle section is probably the best part of the film. When things start to really kind of go into uh, story mode. And we're, we're understanding why things are happening the way they are. But that last, <laughs> I will say that the last scene uh, uh, needed work. It really did. I liked where they were going, but it made me laugh. And I don't think that was the intention of the filmmaker, unfortunately. Bad, bad CGI. I'm just going to tell you right now. Uh, it was rough. <laughs> but as I said, I think the, the bones of a great supernatural thriller are there. In fact, I really, I, you know, it kind of made my mind wonder if like a more experienced director could have really just just brought this whole thing to life. Yeah, keep keep everybody, keep the cast, keep everybody... But I just, the story needed some, some 
oomph to it. It needed a little bit more of, you know, we need more transition, a dialogue, some kind of exposition, a little bit more. Instead, it's like, oh, this character's here, but then why are they the way, you know, why do they have this information or, you know, that kind of thing. And just, it's just seemed like it just needed a little bit more, you know, rewrite or something going on there. But I will say overall, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I did dig it. It was, it was stupid B-movie fun. Uh, you know, Cage is great, as always, as I mentioned. The other actresses played well off him. Uh, everybody, that it, I felt, did a good job. It's just those that first 15 and the last 10 with that horrible CGI. Yeah, they, it, it you know, unfortunately, it does bring the score down a little bit. So if I'm going to, you know, give it an overall score, I'll give it a five and a half. I think, it, I think it's good uh, for dumb entertainment. Maybe we won't go through it. Uh, so how does the Blu-ray look? Uh, <laughs> Blu-ray looks fine. Uh, it does look good. Uh, clean picture throughout. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't notice any kind of major oddities or you know uh, flaws in the in the picture. Uh, we are given a DTS 5.1 surround. Uh, it sounds fine. There's not a lot going on per se in, in your rears. A couple things here and there, but nothing to really you know nothing that I feel that needs to be watched in you know your surround sound system. So. You, if you have your TV speakers, that's just fine. But yeah, overall, uh, Between Worlds, interesting. Uh, I think you should check it out. Honestly, it's if, if you're going for dumb entertainment, uh, just mind that there's a, a few logic gaps here and there. And that last scene, uh, uh, that needed, I needed a slight bump in the budget. But <laughs> anyway, uh, leave in the comments below if you're going to check it out. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. I'll put out videos daily. So until next time, this is Adam with Movie Guy 365. I will see you at the movies.